name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. We begin this evening by settling ourselves in the presence of Jesus in the Blessed Sacrament. Let's pray the Our Father together, that intimate prayer of love between the Father and us. So let us pray in the Spirit, through Jesus, to God our Father. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. And we also ask the help and support of Mary, our mother, asking her to lead us close to Christ. Heal Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. We enter into our time of prayer together, and we bring all that we are, our ups and downs, our difficulties, our concerns. Let's just pause a little moment to maybe clear the busyness of the day to the one side, the clutter of our minds, so that we can be in that silence with Jesus. This evening I would like to take you to that wonderful gospel which we have heard today, that gospel according to Saint Luke. It's a gospel about being called, being invited into God's life witness. Jesus was standing one day by the lake of Genesaret with the crowd pressing round him, listening to the word of God, when he caught sight of two boats close to the bank. The fishermen had gone out of them and were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, it was Simon's, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the crowds from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into deep water and pay out your nets for a catch. Master, Simon replied, we worked hard all night long and caught nothing, but if you say so, I will pay out the nets. And when they had done this, they netted such a huge number of fish that their nets began to tear. So they signalled to their companions in the other boats to come and help them. When these came, they filled the two boats to sinking point. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at the knees of Jesus, saying, Leave me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were completely overcome by the catch they had made. So also were James and John, sons of Zebedee, who were Simon's partners. But Jesus said to Simon, Do not be afraid. From now on it is men you will catch. Then, bringing their boats back to land, they left everything and followed him. It 
it is Jesus who looks at us as he did at Simon. And he realised Simon's past, his brokenness. He could see it very clearly, but he also recognised the strengths. In this wonderful miracle, beautifully symbolised in the catching of the fish, this was to be a memory that Simon Peter would take with him for the rest of his life. It was a time of moving out of a sense of frustration into a new landscape of hope. That's reflected in his frustration and not catching any fish all night long. And then suddenly, through the miracle of Jesus, he does, along with his companions. Simon Peter is only too well aware of his shortcomings, his weaknesses and in the light of this miracle this becomes only too clear for him but what's wonderful in this gospel is that Jesus accepts Peter for who he is warts and all and calls him invites him to follow him Perhaps we too, in our lives, are only too well aware of our own brokenness, our shortcomings, our weaknesses. Does Jesus not look into our hearts? Does he not touch our own lives and recognises the brokenness on the one hand, but wants to offer us healing and strength on the other? Simon, Peter, James and John leave everything and follow Jesus. That's quite a, quite a radical decision on their part. They hardly knew who Jesus was and yet they seem to trust him wholeheartedly and completely. Could we answer with the same sense of enthusiasm? Perhaps it's the sea of the everyday that we have to engage with and set out in our boats as it were hoping to make a catch the church is often described as a boat journeying through this world we are called to be the trusty crew that Jesus has chosen so we grapple with the everyday the trim and tackle we cast out in the hope that the nets will bring in a catch that will give us life and sustenance. This evening we place before Jesus all our brokenness. The brokenness that we see across the world. We see the cry of the poor, the cry of the earth itself urging us to change. Let's pause a moment and maybe open our hearts to Jesus. Let's ask him to give us the strength to follow him, to answer his invitation. As we do that and reflect on that call, call to healing, call to follow, to follow Christ with all our hearts, I'm just going to sing a little piece of music it's called Lay Your Hands Gently Upon Us. Let us entrust our lives, all that we are. Let us 
Let's bring our families, our friends, all those that we know who are experiencing the, the rough and tumble, the storms at sea, as it were, those who are experiencing sickness in any way. Let us include our beautiful world. Let us pray that we can be healers and be healed. Lay your hands gently upon us. Let their touch render your peace. Let them bring your forgiveness and healing. May your hands gently lay your hands. You were sent to free the broken hearted. You were sent to give sight to the blind. You desire to heal all our illness. May your hands gently lay your hands. Lay your hands gently upon us. Let the touch render your peace. Let them bring your forgiveness and healing. May your hands gently lay your hands. There is indeed a, a great need for healing in our world. Sometimes healing comes in a variety of ways. Sometimes it's by simply being a presence, a support, the ability to, to listen, to have a meeting of minds. Sometimes a, a trouble shared is undoubtedly a trouble halved. A cup of tea, a gathering, can somehow, when listening is part of it, bring a lot of healing. Many of us carry that baggage of the past, perhaps, and sometimes we're quite unwilling to let go of it. Somehow we, we feel ourselves very unacceptable in God's eyes. Perhaps we view ourselves in a very different way from how God sees us. He calls Simon Peter with all his own brokenness and he calls us too in our modern contemporary world. We call to mind those who are encouragers in our lives too. We must also acknowledge the positive, God's presence in, in the hands, the feet, the eyes, the minds of those he works through to lift our spirits, to bring that little bit of healing that enables us to journey forward. We acknowledge the pain and the suffering. We remember those who are going through a very tough time at present. Remember our family members, perhaps who are unwell, 
those who are in our parishes and beyond. We pray for healing too in times when there is great suspicion in the ether between nations. Pray for peace, a language of reconciliation and healing. Is that not much more, not much more fulfilling? Don't we have enough to do in terms of our everyday life? Let us just bring some prayers today as we remember our sick, those who are unwell at this time in hospital, in their own home, in our nursing homes. Not forgetting, of course, our frontline workers, all those who are in the midst of this current pandemic, endeavouring to do all they can, exhausted as they are, to be those hands and feet. And I've witnessed that in the hospital, in our care homes, in someone's own home. I've seen that sense of care, of love, of reaching out, of endeavouring to do all they can for the sake of that person. Touching moments, uplifting moments, reassuring moments. So let us bring our prayers today. We pray in a very special way for Lourdes to receive healing of her vision and paralyzed left side. We pray for Victor's wife to receive complete healing of her chronic sore hip. We pray for the recovery of Thomas from his breathing difficulties. We pray for Warren to receive complete healing from the after effects of a stroke. Let us pray also for Victor to receive healing from diabetes and nerve damage in his feet and in his legs. We remember the bereaved, asking you, Lord, to please grant them healing as well in the midst of the storms that they experience. And perhaps through our own personal experience, we too might journey with them with a sense of empathy. We pray for all those who work and tend to the sick. Grant them your love, your protection, that heartfelt sense of vocation as they bring new sight to the blind, as it were, hope, refreshing news. Let's pause just a little moment to call to mind all those that we all carry in our hearts. Let's include all nations. Let's include all those known to us and those who have no one to pray for them.
Jesus. Strengthen us. Strengthen the sick. Be with those who tend to the sick. Fill our hearts with that depth of love that will enable us to bring your healing to others. Help us to be healed in ourselves first. We hand over our lives to you and we ask you to strengthen us today and every day. To grant us, grant us the grace and blessing that we need to face the challenges of a complex modern world, hungry. Help us not to lose heart, but to trust in you all the more. The great Saint Ignatius of Loyola was a soldier by profession, and he was injured in a battle and so began a journey that would change his life through his injuries he sought healing and the enemy forces looked after him well he did heal but in the midst of his healing he began to read the scriptures and so began a great love affair with Christ he came from a wealthy family, gave it all up, despite his family's opposition for a while, and he began to establish the Society of Jesus, often known as the Jesuits, whose motto is, to the greater glory of God. This man, conscious of his own shortcomings and weaknesses, begins to bring Christ in a new way, a way in which the world, no different to our own, was hungry. And so he did. He brought change. He had courage in his own heart and mind, instilled therein by Christ. A message of hope, a message of change, a message of prayer, a message of renewal and deep love. One of his great themes is that of abandonment, abandoning our cares and our worries, our concerns, all that we are into God's hands. And in doing so, we are actually more free. Let me pray, or let us all pray together the prayer of St. Ignatius as we abandon ourselves to Christ today and every day. Take, Lord, receive all my freedom, my memory, my understanding, my entire will. All that I have and cherish, you have given to me. Now I return at all to be guided by your will. Your grace and your love are wealth enough for me. Give me these, Lord Jesus, and I ask for nothing more. In our reflection this evening, we have encountered different people. Jesus encounters Simon, James and John, fishermen who would become fishers of people, casting out their nets of faith endeavouring to bring those close to Christ. It's been a week of different celebrations. The presentation. Did we not meet Simeon and Anna in the temple? And how Simeon rejoiced at the presence of Jesus who would change all nations by virtue of his birth. And Anna, faithful like Simeon, in the temple, praying and fasting. 
and how through their wonderful sense of faith they caught sight of the Son of God. We have Saint Blaise as well, who brought healing to the little boy who had a fish bone caught in his throat, and how through his command the little boy coughed up the bone and he was saved. All these wonderful individuals spur us on and point us in the right direction. So let us not lose hope but continue to trust in the loving Christ who leads us close to the Father. And we have the Spirit at work within us who keeps us bound to God and helps us to remember what Jesus has said and done and helps us to pray, putting words on our prayers when we find it difficult. Thank you, Lord, for your presence in our lives. Help us in the difficulties that we face, in the storms at sea, the storms within. Grant us your calm. May we use the compass of faith to guide us. We ask this and all our prayers this evening. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just one last little reflection, and it really is focusing on Simeon, who, in a sense, like Simon, had a calling from God. I'd like to finish with a little piece of music dedicated to this man, Simeon. At last, all-powerful Master, you give leave to your servant to go in peace according to your promise. For my eyes have seen your salvation, which you have prepared for all nations the light to enlighten the Gentiles, and give glory to Israel, your people. So, Lord, bring your healing, affect all our lives, the lives of every human being that you have created, all those living cells, as it were, who make up the body of Christ. May your healing bring you hope, a new sense of answering that call of Christ and in abandoning ourselves in the very best sense of the word into your hands. And so we pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Journey well. Keep close to Christ as we endeavour to answer his call as Simon Peter did and what a difference that made to him. <laughs>